Hello everyone, and welcome to the next bonus episode of Breath of Fire 2. Now, the messenger fight was not super easy, as you could see, there was a chance of death, but we handled it easily enough. But now we're going to see what happens if we haven't been using Rand the entire time. As you can see, he is way too weak to deal with the challenge now, so... We're going to find the fastest way to grind him up, and joining me for that journey is Skyzo. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Um, it's been a while, right, since you've uploaded, so... Hey, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Man, it is just sad seeing how weak Rand can be at this point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. But in any case... Now, the first thing you want to do, um, I'm assuming you haven't followed the walkthrough and are therefore not subjecting yourself to any of the limitations that I'm putting myself under, so the first thing you want to do is find Dees. Now, that would be the lovely woman already in my party, but it's been a while since I showed you how to recruit her, so what you want to do is you want to go to this hidden desert tile at around this region. And you'll find these two ghost guys in the first room, and they'll tell you that she left and may get back sometime next century. We don't want to wait a century, so after that, we're gonna go back to New Haven and recruit her that way. Right, that sounds simple enough. Yeah, and the reason she's important is because of her instant death spell. And the fact that she has warp and is just all around a really powerful unit. She and Super Stin are part of what make the this next grinding strat viable. Because it's got some really, really powerful monsters that will make your life miserable if you don't have her and Super Stin. And this is where you'd recruit her. Right, so this is finally a section in the game that requires some, you know, pulling out all the guns, basically. Exactly. And we're gonna go to the Island of Giants. And that'd be where we get all those powerful monsters. We actually could have gone there as soon as we got the whale, but... Well... That would have been a really bad idea. I can only imagine. Well, honestly, it might. Because the thing of it is, you know how Bosch has the snipe ability which can one hit KO monsters unreliably? Right, what about it? Well, it does have a small chance of killing everything on that island, so if you wanted to roll the dice a little, you could sort of power level a bit in the mid game. I don't think that would have been really efficient, but it would have at least been a nice use for Bosch. That's true. Anyways, our first enemy is the Atomic Goo. I think he has around like 900 HP and has the Quake spell, so he can wipe us in two turns, but fortunately, like a lot of really bulky enemies, he has no resistance to status ailments or magic, so we just kill him instantly, like that. No, that's convenient. Oh yeah. You see how Rand shot up six levels? Yeah, that seemed a little strange. <laughs> and this would be our next monster, the Gatling Head. Now, this guy does have really good magic resistance, and he also has the Cure 4 spell, which means if you can't kill him fast enough, he can heal every last drop of damage, so... We want to switch him out in favor of either the Atomic Goo or this guy. Now, you know how there are monsters that are supposed to have really good magic resistance, but battle items punch right through that? Yeah, so this is the case for this enemy as well. Yeah. And you could also use one of the whelp spells to do it as well, because the way these guys work is... They do sets amount of damage, no matter what, so... That's another convenient monster. I do enjoy the gimmick of this place. It's nice, it reminds me of Super Mario Bros. 3, where you have the, the giant world. 
Yeah, it did have that, huh? Yeah, it was uh, fairly difficult. I mean, the, the whole game is difficult, but that one in particular, I felt. Super Mario 64 had that as well, as well as the little version of everything, right? Yeah, that's right. It was only it was only one level though. Yeah. Now we're also going with the assumption that uh, you didn't get the HP boost from the Wildcat, since that's sort of a semi-hidden thing. So, we still want Rand at a respectable level. I think level 17 is the bare minimum he can get bef before he's just more likely than not to lose to the messenger. So that's how high we're climbing. The one thing you want to be careful of when you're grinding here is there's this one encounter with these three little slime type characters. I think they're either called King Slimes or King Sludges or whatever. Basically, they not only have perfect magic resistance, but they also have the death spell. They're the only enemy that have perfect wisdom and the death spell all in one package, which means they just bypass all your resistance instantly unless you have the life brace, which is at the very end of the game. So what I'm saying is they will basically wipe you if Super Sten can't switch them out long enough. Fortunately, they're also a really rare encounter, so probably won't have to worry about them, but it is one of the other reasons why we would like to not grind at the Island of Giants if we can help it. So it looks like this place is only one area, right? So that's a little disappointing. I do like the gimmick. Yeah. Well, at any rate, Rand is level 18 now, so we can defeat the messenger as normal. So not nearly as inconvenient as the Sten grind, wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. That was a nightmare. And I think uh, somebody else recorded in my place because I, yeah. Well, we lost the, we lost both of our audio the, after the first time, and I didn't want to subject you to that again. So I had another guy who had played the game before and could share my pain. Oh, absolutely. Because you know, like. I like your quote that you had after the episode, where, like, like after we got done, you sort of sat down with me and you were like, Why did we do that again? Yeah, I'm not one to... I don't typically enjoy grinds. <laughs> well, it's just... It's one of those things you had to be there to understand, and fortunately the other guy was there to understand, so... That was convenient on our part. I can see that. But yeah, anyways, as a refresher, this guy will always use a buffing spell on the first turn, but after that is a chance of a melee attack, so... The first turn is a free hit, but after that you want to assume that he'll reduce you below half and that you should use restoratives every other turn. Right. Well, so far, so good. Yeah. Like, really not hard, it's just... You know, there's always that 1.5% chance of a crit, which can ruin your day if you don't also score a lucky dodge. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you're doing pretty much everything you can in this fight, so... I do think that it does seem like if you got unlucky, he would, you know, defeat you, but... That's true for other battles in this game as well. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Anyways, he is down now, and... Skyzo wasn't lucky enough to where he got to see the redone music, but... There's a small sample of it. I'll show you the actual episode... Once I get that published. Sounds good. Anyways... This has been Fiona de Questers signing out. Have a nice day, everyone, and God bless you. Alright, I'll catch you later, YouTube. Bye.